Hello, welcome to Crystal Core Skills. Uh, before going to uh, see SAR code in the details, I thought it would be very important to uh, look at some of the constant constants in uh, mathematics. Uh, mathematics. So in this video, we are going to look at uh, some historical historical perspective. Uh, of, of the constants and we're going also to look at uh, 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 what are they what are what are these constants what are these constants and uh, we are going to look at uh, why we may need them we may need, may need them or where we can use them. We can use them. What we may, uh, why we may need them, or where we can uh, use them. So uh, these are the, uh, the 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 content for uh, this particular video. So we really need to achieve this objective. Now we are going to start by uh, looking at the constants. Uh, some and there are some uh, pa historical perspective. So what are these constants in mathematics? These are the important uh, uh, numbers that we need to accomplish a specific task. For example, we have uh, pi, uh, we have um, e, and uh, we have i. So these three are the most important constants in mathematics. Uh, so let us start by looking at uh, pi, for example. Uh, pi actually was discovered uh, sometimes back uh, I would say between 650 to uh, 200 uh, BC but it became uh, well known in the 19 uh, BC uh, it was discovered actually in uh, uh, Egypt Egypt and uh, Mesopotamia Mia, Mesopotamia, and the first person who actually uh, tried to calculate the value of I, I would say the first group of people, uh, the uh, Archimedes, Archimedes of of Syracuse, uh, they used a lot of uh, sequences to try to estimate the value of pi, and uh, in their in their trial they they came close to a value of pi so they tried uh, a lot of things in the circle uh, because actually uh, the period uh, when pi came to their existence that was the period when they're trying to uh, learn about circle and bring circle to the existence as well so they came almost at the same time because you cannot do without pi when you're dealing with circle so Archimedes of Syracuse came up with this methodology of trying to find out how many polygon size how many sides of polygon can fit into this circle in order to estimate the accurate value of pi so they started by uh, by drawing one polygon which symbolizes some kind of uh, 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 the side of this polygon symbolizes the isosceles triangle because two sides are the same and then and then they drew the second one and then the third one third side the fifth side the sixth side the seventh side just like that like that like that and you know they continue like that so they use uh, the, the 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 length of the side of the polygon and the and, and, and the and the total number of sides to work out the the, the, the estimate the value of pi is like to work out the circumference of the circle so um they started by choosing n equal to two and then two n equals to four and then four n equal to uh, 16 and then 16 n e n uh, 16 n equals to 256 and then 256 n equals to 65536 five, and then 65536 five, n equal to 4.3 something 
billion, I would say, uh, uh, to 4 point something billion. So they go on like, they went on like that. And the more end they choose, the more closely they came to estimate uh, the value of pi, which is approximately 3.14. Uh, but they did not come with that exact value. They found something like uh, 3.16 or 7, something, something. But they were close. So Archimedes were the first people to uh, try to estimate uh, the value of, of pi. And uh, another person during the same period also who tried uh, to uh, estimate pi was uh, this uh, Chinese called Zhu. Zhu Chong Chong Zhu, Zhu Chong Zhe. He, he was also uh, the greatest mathematician of all time uh, from China, and he also contributed in trying to estimate the value of pi, but uh, they they were not able to actually come with the accurate value. So the person who actually almost made pi to become uh, as one of the de facto kind of a symbol, de facto kind of symbol used in mathematics was uh, William Williams Jones, Jones. But uh, he, 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 yeah, he, he brought pi into 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 the system, and the person who uh, made it well known, who made pi to be well known, was actually um, 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 Hiller. Hiller, you know, Jacob. I would say not Jacob Hiller, Leonard, Leonard, Leonard Hiller. The reason for this is because uh, Hiller was trying to, um, to 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 use pi a lot when he was trying to derive many identities, uh, which he known which is known as Euler identities. He, uh, Euler identities, and he came up with a constant e. Uh, which uh, is part of that identity as well. So he used pi as one of the identity uh, so that um, uh, you could come, I think the, the, this identity uh, it could be check on the internet. I'm not quite sure about this, but I think this is one of the Hiller identity so that uh, you can have like e to pi equal to minus one. This is just one of the examples of his identity that he was trying to to come up with and he could not do without pi that's why he made use of pi very 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 effectively there this one was sometimes in uh, uh, 18 the 18th century uh, uh, but uh, William Jones uh, brought the idea of pi in 1700s and that's when pi came to, the, to their existence and uh, and Hiller actually uh, made it more popular in 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 the math in the math in the mathematics community or in the community of mathematicians. But before Hiller, um, uh, Jacob uh, Jacob also was trying to do a lot of work behind the scene, but that was not in pi. But Hiller came out with uh, this uh, Hiller um, Hiller constant here. Euler constant is actually one of the most important constants as well, and uh, it came to exist uh, sometimes in the 17th century as well. But Euler made it popular when he discovered it in the 18 in the 18th century. Now, before it became popular, uh, there was one great mathematician as well called uh, Jacob. Jacob. Uh, Jacob uh, Bernoulli, Bern Bern Bernoulli. Jacob Bernoulli, he was one of the greatest mathematicians of, of all time, but he was dealing more with statistics. So he was trying to estimate how population can grow, uh, how to calculate the growth in population in calculus, using calculus. So he actually discovered this constant, uh, this constant here. Uh, e, which uh, is estimated as uh, uh, 2.718281828 for something. But he was very unsure. He, he thought uh, there was something, and and then uh, Hiller took that advantage uh, uh, and came with Hiller's constant. <laughs> 
constant which is e e which is the Euler constant which is defined as the limit uh, of some number as it is increases uh, then uh, the number tends to limit one as the proportion of that number is measured uh, uh, to find out how fast it can increase so when you increase n uh, the more you increase n the more this value will tend to the value of e which is uh, 2.0 uh, which is uh, 2. Point, uh, e. Let me, let me write properly. The limit of n tends to infinity. Uh, uh, tends to infinity. Uh, the limit. The limit goes to one as n tends to infinity. Uh, as you try to work uh, to increase the proportion of that number to measure its rate of increase. So this was the Euler's constant actually. Uh, Hiller came with this constant, which is uh, 2.718281828.4, and so on and so on. So this is Hiller constant, and it's very important. It is one of the most important constant which is used in calculus, in analysis, and uh, even in, in in some algebra as well as uh, in some uh, geometry as well. <laughs> That's why we are we are we are looking at it. So this one, this constant, uh, help us in what is what is referred to as uh, exponential exponential uh, function. It is defined exponential function, which is used to measure uh, measure exponential uh, exponential growth. It's used to measure exponential growth. Now, exponential growth is actually the kind of growth that uh, grows, you know, like to measure the kind of growth that grows, uh, I mean, goes rapidly. For example, the number that increases at the, at, the, at, the, at the speed of light, if you like, it grows very fast and it's used for measuring the population increase, for example, uh, population increase. Especially uh, if you want to know how fast population grow, you can use exponential function. Rabbit is one of the the, the best example actually to <laughs> to use to measure population growth because they really enjoy themselves and they grow faster. If you have one rabbit, that one rabbit can produce another, another one produces another, another one produces another. So within a short period of time you will have a farm of rabbits so rabbit help us to measure this growth and exponential growth is actually uh, one of the growth that you know people may mistake it but exponential growth really uh, exponential growth is not equal to the polynomial polynomial growth because polynomial growth is just like uh, when you take something like power series, for example, uh, uh, or polynomial, uh, uh, polynomial, in polynomials in, in in algebra. For example, you can have r, you can have x plus x to the square, or uh, plus another x cubed plus x to the power four plus and so on. So these numbers are growing rapidly but they're not as rapid or as fast as the exponential growth which is actually the reverse of that instead of having x squared you have <laughs> 2 to the power x or e to the x so this kind of growth is very fast now where do we need why do we need them yeah to measure the the the, the decay and the growth in the population for example if you have x or x axis and y axis uh, we know that the limit is one so if you're measuring the decay or exponential decay the line will come from this side and go like that which means this y is equal to e minus e or negative e to the x this negative e symbolizes the the, the the decay or if the population is increasing you can use uh, y equal to e to the x and this one is symbolizing the growth in the population or you can just increase 
uh, the base here so that if 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 the base go goes high and this one can go like that let's say if uh, treble e <laughs> to the x and if you reduce it this curve can go like that e to the to the x a uh, half of e to the x also the most important thing about exponential function is the inverse of exponential uh, of the exponent which it uh, gives uh, it gives rise to the concept of logarithm so logarithm is basically the power of numbers for example you can have like uh, y equal to e to the x uh, so that x there is the logarithm so you can express x in terms of in of y so this in stands for natural logarithm which is what is all about so uh, you can uh, have this as uh, the power of numbers now you can also write it in another way because you can write this one as logarithm like x with log of y but then you need to include e there because it's natural logarithm for example you can have a number like 2 to the 3 uh, to the power of 3 equal to 8 uh, which means that this 3 there is our logarithm 3 is equal to log to the base of 2 of 8 and that 2 there is our e so that is how we can use uh, exponential function or the Schiller constant to uh, help us in the analysis that's just a brief uh, summary and uh, this gives us to uh, it brings us to another constant which is uh, i i is also one of the important constant discovered sometimes back in uh, uh, the 17th century as well when Schiller was trying to uh, come up with his identity and i is basically an imaginary uh, imaginary number it's an imaginary number it is mainly used in uh, in the complex number because uh, um, complex number is a number that you know you can, I would say the number that is not real. <laughs> so when you use i, then you make it to appear as another real number. So i is defined as uh, uh, minus one. So i squared is equal to minus one, so that you can have i which is uh, the square root of minus one so this is actually the, uh, the 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 definition of i which is uh, made to make us uh, work with numbers which uh, which are not real or the, the the equation which has got no real root for example you can have equation like x square uh, plus one equal to zero which means that x squared is equal to minus 1. You cannot find uh, the root of this equation because x is equal to the square root of minus 1. And this is where our i comes in. So i is equal to the root of minus 1. So that you can treat i as any other number. So you can assign minus or plus there to make it appear like any other number. But in real sense, i is the square root of 1. So any number with i on it is a complex number. So this brings us to the end of this series. Uh, we are going to look at pi into more details when we uh, tackle the circle. I hope this video has been informative and thank you for viewing.